we get a lot of emails, especially from time to diagonals. And these are mostly to do with new developments, new research, new technologies coming in. Can you tell us about the new drugs for diabetes which are uh, already there in the market and what kind of drugs are expected to come in the near future in India? Uh, for type 2 diabetics, we have uh, uh, a drug which is there for the last five years. They are called the incretin therapy. They are an injectable as well as an oral drug. Uh, a wonder drug because they suppress the alpha cells which is another cells which uh, in the pancreas and they suppress that cell because excess of a hormone from that cell increases the liver's output of glucose and that's how your blood sugar goes up so this therapy which is an injectable as well as an oral form uh, has been used widespread in diabetics across the globe for the last five years we have another promising drug called SGLT2 inhibitors which uh, has been launched in parts of the world and India should be having the launch probably by the end of this year. Uh, they reduce the blood sugar by increasing the, the, uh, the renal, the, the, the kidney's uh, uh, disposal of uh, glucose. So you, you end up urinating more and removing your glucose through your urine. And it seems to be a very interesting pathway of reducing blood sugars without low sugars. Uh, there are newer insulins which has come in in the last one or two years, especially a, a, a very long-acting basal insulin which can last for almost 30 to 36 hours. In terms of type 1 diabetics, um, uh, there are a lot of therapy in terms of uh, newer insulins, newer short-acting and longer-acting basal insulins. Apart from this, uh, the use of technology in diabetes, especially in type 1 diabetes, has completely revolutionized the kind of treatment we do for type 1 diabetes. We use a lot of continuous glucose monitoring nowadays we, to find out. It's, it's a sensor which is placed on the outside of the stomach which senses your interstitial blood glucose continuously for a period of 7 days. Uh, that way we are able to find out how the blood sugar swings in each individual, especially in a type 1 diabetics where you can have a large blood sugar swings. Um, the swings can be taken care of by what we call as an insulin pump which is very close to an artificial pancreas and uh, the insulin pump augmented with an insulin with, with a sensor can work as as close to an artificial pancreas the the sensor can kinds of sense the interstitial blood glucose and the insulin pump can deliver the the insulin as required so this makes the life of a type 1 diabetic extremely flexible and uh, can improve his quality and his length of life surely uh, doctor, when it comes to it, uh, for the drug which can actually uh, dis uh, rather excrete excess blood sugar through urine, uh, there are two issues here. One is that uh, can that be applied to type 1 diabetics also? There is data being generated on type 1, whether it is the incretin based therapy or the SGLT2 which is uh, promoting uh, blood sugar by increasing the disposal glucose disposal through urine the, the, the initially the data is purely on type 2 diabetics it will first have a uh, have an approval for type 2 diabetics but there is data being generated for type 1 diabetics and the hope is that it could be used for type 1 diabetics yes uh, doctor where where in the world uh, is that being sold or rather being available the the available? sglt2 inhibitors the uh, the drugs which I spoke about. Yes. The SGLT2 inhibitors have been approved in, uh, uh, in in Australia. It's been approved in Brazil. It's been approved in parts of Europe. Uh, one of the SGLT2 inhibitors has been approved in the US. The other has got a not, but it's still not uh, come into the market. So both the SGLT2 inhibitors, which uh, uh, are in parts of Europe, one has been approved. In, both have been approved in the US, but one is in the market. The other would be in the market by this year. Uh, Panacea, yes, it's approved in Japan, it's approved in Australia, Brazil and parts of Europe. Why is it taking so much? So, so much well, th this is a time? usual process. Uh, means there is no fast tracking of newer drugs. Uh, the, the US FDA has, has looked at uh, a specific kind of data generation before they can approve any oral anti-diabetic. And that means that uh, any newer drug should, uh, sh uh, should have clear-cut clinical research showing that it does not signal any cardiovascular problems. So uh, each drug would be delayed by at least five years because they have to do further research before it can be uh, applied to the FDA. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. And once it's applied, it takes minimum 18 months to two years. Yes, doctor. Uh, but that's in the US. I was just asking, why is it not coming to India? Uh, India also, the, the, the DCGI takes anywhere between 18 months after uh, it's uh, after submission. So it, it's been approved in the US in 2013. So I think we are not uh, very late. Probably by the end of this year, it, both the drugs have been submitted in India and hopefully you should have an approval by the end of this year. Doctor, what, are the, what is the downside of such drugs which can actually uh, you know, make do away with the uh, insulin treatment as well as I, I, I don't think any drug, any drug which can come can replace insulin ever. Because a patient is a diabetic because he uh, either has uh, reduced quantity or reduced quality of insulin. And when you give insulin exogenously, that's from outside, you're going to replace the quality and the quantity. So whether you are a type 1 diabetic or type 2 diabetic, nothing can replace insulin. Uh, the, the, there is a lot of data being generated on oral insulin. Maybe it may take another few years before you may have oral insulins in the market. But as of today, uh, uh, insulin remains to be the cornerstone of therapy for every diabetic. And I don't think any drug can replace insulin from the management of diabetes. But, uh, okay, before going further into that, uh, let me ask you, can that uh, also affect the kidneys because essentially it would mean that... The, the newer drug, you mean? Exactly. No, the, the newer drug, there's a lot of research being done on that and it, uh, it, uh, it works by a mechanism where it inhibits a certain, certain transport mechanism and it doesn't make the kidney work more than what it usually would work. So uh, the, the, uh, the filtration rate of the kidney remains unaffected by, by this drug. So it's absolutely safe on the kidney. And, and the it's going to be... It's going to be yeah? And the glomeruli will not be affected? Absolutely not. And uh, most important part is that it is mostly going to be, be looked at in patients who are elderly where uh, the risk of low sugar is not going to be there. So th this particular drug would be in, in a segment where we don't want low sugars to come in at all. And it would be a boon to gestational diabetics because uh, essentially when there is pregnancy and that kind of uh, diabetes. Uh, this particular drug, as we already talking about, this particular drug in gestational diabetes would be again far-fetched because we need uh, data when we are looking at drugs in uh, in pregnancy. And as of today, it's only uh, what we call as glyburide or glibinclamide and metformin which has got approval for usage in pregnancy and obviously insulin and uh, some of the newer insulin analogs so uh, as such uh, uh, during pregnancy and diabetes we have to use drugs which are approved and this particular group of drugs will take a lot of time before it can be researched in uh, pregnant diabetics and can be used doctor we also have a few emails especially coming from uh, the tier 2 cities uh, you know, like Pune. They say that there are drugs available abroad which can be used, or rather, there are uh, insulin, uh, the injections used abroad to counter hypoglycemia, and these uh, these drugs are not available in India. No, uh, these drugs are very well available in India. Which is That's glucagon? injection glucagon, one milligram is available across of the, of the drug manufacturers, but I think. Probably the doctors may not be aware that this is available and it's a wonder drug when patient has symptomatic or moderate to severe hypoglycemia and cannot be taken to the nearby hospital uh, and the rates are cheap. I think it's around 1200 rupees for one milligram of glucagon. Shelf life is almost around 24 months so it's, it's available at least in metros is easily available. Doctor, how does that glucagon work? Uh, glucagon is the natural hormone which is made from the alpha cells and what this glucagon does is that it increases the output of glucose from the liver. So liver, uh, liver's job is to absorb glucose when you eat a lot and to store it when you don't eat and give it when you are when not eating. So glucagon is the drug uh, which kind, sorry, is the hormone which gives a signal to the liver to release the glucose. So glucagon and insulin have a, have a kind of inverse relationship and they both are secreted from the pancreas. So based on the needs of the patient, either it's insulin or glucagon. So uh, glucagon would uh, end up releasing more glucose from the liver 
and uh, this the hypoglycemia would be treated uh, within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Doctor, there is also a question which you know, we often uh, deal with and that is about why not glucose injections given by the patient or the caretaker at home when there is a problem of hypoglycemia? Why do you uh, have to when we inject glucose, one, there, there's a very uh, serious risk of of uh, problems related to the injection site. Two, the uh, subcute or the intramuscular injection is not a physiological site. Once you inject, you're going to take probably up to 45 minutes for it to reach the bloodstream. If somebody can get an IV line at home, uh, one can do it, but it's extremely risky. So, and you, need, uh, yeah, you need expertise in that. So. Glucagon injection is the most cheapest way and the best way to treat uh, severe hypoglycemia. But doctor, uh, in patients uh, who are on uh, dialysis, uh, do you think that can work because they are already quite weak and their body may not have the enough... Uh, uh, the uh, only so group of patients where we cannot use glucagon is patients with liver cell failure. Oh. Okay, Because if your liver is exhausted of what we call as glucose reserves, glycogen, then uh, glucagon doesn't work. Glucagon also doesn't work in patients who are uh, completely, uh, what do you call it, uh, post-pancreatectomy sometimes. You give a glucagon injection may not work, but most commonly if you have cirrhosis of liver and you give glucagon, may not work because uh, if your liver is damaged, it may not uh, work at all. Doctor, what about new insulins which have come? You know, there is also uh, a report which says that there are new insulins which can completely prevent hypoglycemia. See, the, the newer insulins in terms of the newer basal insulins which have come in, one is superior to the other purely because of this, that uh, uh, the, the mechanism by which it's protracted or it's delayed Mm -hmm. is, is, is in such a way that uh, it weighs how much is the uh, sugar and uh, also weighs how much should be released. So in terms, yes, these, these are uh, insulins which do not cause hypoglycemia and in turn there won't be any defensive snacking and in turn there won't be any weight gain. So yes, the newer insulins, the next generation insulins which we don't have much details as of now are called smart insulins which would absolutely have zero hypoglycemia. Doctor, are you disappointed by the research in uh, automatic systems for uh, insulin in terms for both type 2 as well as type 1? Automated diabetes? systems? In, in the sense that, you know, a machine which can actually uh, gauge the blood sugar as well as... I'm not disappointed at all because I've been... Uh, uh, a, a student of technologies and diabetes and have attended a lot of workshops across the globe on it and uh, our pancreas is a fantastic computer which senses uh, how much glucose and gives enough uh, uh, insulin accordingly and I think we have come a long way from the pumps which were probably two decades back and we are very close to what we call as closing the loop where we can uh, have a sensor which picks up glucose, uh, measures and uh, send data to the insulin pump. The insulin pump kind of integrates the, that data and then uh, tells how much is to be given. So we are very close to that. Uh, there are a lot of algorithms. I think uh, we would have a algorithm even for ethnic diversity. I think that's where the problem would be and the type of food. So I think it would take probably a few years more, but I think it's we are very close to closing the loop as far as the artificial pancreas goes. <laughs>